mention the bit where her dad simps over Edward Cullen? Hope you didn't just click the cats because we don't actually have one today. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, we have one now, my bad. <laughs> I'm not a fairy. <laughs> As you know, there's been one particular author who's been like topping the charts year on year on year, month after month. Um, and I haven't actually read a single one of her books. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, neither have I. Her <laughs> reputation deceives her. Proceed. Pro oh, damn it. it proceed. <laughs> Proceeds, yeah. Her reputation precedes her. Yeah, you know who we're talking about. So today we're going to be going into the city centre, we're going to be buying the Co Meisters books. <laughs> I think we're gonna get in Verity because we've heard that's like that one's one of the better ones. Yeah, we've heard that's one of the better ones. Just... So I want to try like give myself the best opportunity mm, to like yeah. like. If the works has a sale, I'll get more than one. If yeah. they don't, <laughs> yeah, we're not paying full price because we're not going to Waterstones. If I'm they're sorry. two pounds fifty, we'll get two. Have you seen that video where it's like the UK's best discount bookstore? Oh my god, I saw that video to the works. <laughs> yeah, vlogging today, guys. <laughs> hey guys, we're on our way into town Excuse now, me. and then do the aesthetic shot of the dirty pavement and our feet walking. Look at these shoes. That's in the wild, guys. Content. That's what I'm talking about. Don't mind me just frolicking around the city. <laughs> guys, we are amidst the beautiful British natural. Oh fuck! I can't. What did I say? admiring how clear the river is, how beautiful the architecture is, beautiful and colourful. Like me! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> the target has been spotted. Oh yeah! Our plans got spoiled. So we didn't have the books we wanted, so we're ordering them second hand online. And we'll order yeah, we are them. ordering, what is it, four for the price of three, so we can read two each. Yeah. How entertaining and fun. The notebook arrived. I just got back home and it was here. Wow! So we've got four books. We have Verity, which Daisy's going to be reading, Dark Shade of Magic for me, and My Policeman for Daisy, and Never Never, which, yeah, I'm also going to be reading. I spent money on a Colleen Hoover book. That is a thing that I have done. Hello, I have got the book. Yay! Um, Ellis gave it to me when we were at school. Well, he didn't give it to me, he literally threw it at me. Guys, do music catch. Which is horrible, but I have it now. Um, Verity by Colleen Hoover, and um, I've read about five pages, which is why I have a little tab, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and I just put a few question marks next to where it says that she's the New York Times best selling author because how? How? Um, but yeah, I am going to start reading it now, so update you in a bit. that fucking terrible book well right let's start things <laughs> off by saying <laughs> let's start things off by saying this actually wasn't as terrible as i thought this was going to be but the bar was like in hell so we it's a week later and we finished both norbert ah! you had your bit of cat content okay okay the cats the cats are still here they're just not in the shop yeah we'll, we'll put a video up somewhere okay so we both finished our books whether that's a good thing or not is for you to decide they were both better than we expected yeah, we, They actually like kind of, they surpassed my expectations. I feel like if I'd read Verity, I wouldn't be saying the same thing. No, I think this was actually all right. The mystery yeah. element of this was actually good. It was just all the, everything else. <laughs> uh, wait, can I just say, there will be spoilers for both books throughout this video. Yeah. But like, does that really matter? Because it's, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. So this, to start off, is a pretty boring book about these two high school students. Um, yeah, high, high school students, one's 17, one's 18. And basically the book starts and main girl she she can't remember nothing she's like forgotten all her, she's she doesn't know who she is she doesn't know where she is she doesn't know like what's going on at all she's just lost all her memories basically but then there's this boy who like everyone's like 
acting like he's her boyfriend. It turns out he's lost all his memories too. Oh no! So like, <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> Both of them have just randomly forgotten their memories for a reason that isn't explained, and that's like the central mystery of the book. But and by the explained. and by the end of the book, you still don't know why they've lost their memories, and it's the shittiest explanation ever for how they get them back. Even the the way that they get the memories back is stupid as well. It's literally just all oh, their soulmates. Ew. Like, because they were falling out of love, and then the way they got and like it was the universe intervening to make them get back oh, together. Gosh, like the reconnection. I know, I know. But this right. So this book, some parts of this book were actually okay. Like there was some cute scenes. There was some like bit, bits where I like laughed out loud because it was just like so fucking really stupid. And the dialogue was actually pretty funny for like a couple pages. I think it was like two pages. But like, there was good in some parts. But the rest of it, I was just like. I didn't care, it was boring, there was loads of like random plot lines just thrown in there. In case you didn't mention, the main character's name is Charlie with a Z. I'll let <laughs> you decide where the Z goes. And also, the, the, the amount of times they drop the title in this book has to be like half the fucking they word go, like, count. Never, never. They, a part of this is like, to regain their memories, they're reading like love letters that they wrote to each other because they hand wrote love letters to each other because they didn't want to text, they're like, text go away, text can be deleted, calls aren't remembered, but like, letters, I'll be able to keep every single one of your letters until I die. They, they start all the letters off with Charlie Baby and Silas Baby That's and they end them with, um, they end them with never, never, and then their name. Ew. And it just means never stop, never forget. And then like, I don't even know where it came from. Like they don't explain that either. They don't explain. <laughs> they just—it's just the thing they say to each other. And I'm like, okay. And but it's just right. So I think the writing in this book—it tried to be so profound, and like it thought it was being profound, but it just wasn't. Like this, this yeah, thing here. Yeah, same in this. To be so fair. I'll, so I'll just read a bit. I need water. It's the only thing I remember the taste of. Maybe that's because water has no taste. <laughs> like, okay. That just makes no sense. <laughs> and they're like, how do I remember what Bluetooth is? Like, I, I don't, I don't give a shit. The, another reason there wasn't a single smut scene in this book, which is what I'll I was say like, the same thing. For right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the main guy's um in a monologue was like so horny all the time, and there was some bits where he was like, she took off her shirt or whatever, but there wasn't any like hardcore straight coho written smut, which is like a win for me in my books. But the random problematic shit that just like dropped in out of nowhere. Like I'm like, my drawers are neat. I must have OCD. And I just never brought up ever again. And the yeah. the main guy who is still a high school student sleeping with the school counsellor who is a full grown woman Oh yes, yeah, she says. I think one of her lines is literally, "I'm a woman. I'm a married woman with a degree." Like that's something shocking. Well, that's like similar in there. Yeah. So this is him talking to the school counselor that he's sleeping with, who's a full-grown woman with a degree, as she reminds us. Everyone, I only have five minutes left before I have to be in class. That's not. I can do all the things I want to do to you Ew. in just five minutes. He is a high school student. This is a high school student talking like that to a grown woman. Yes. And then she's like, "Come back during lunch." She whispers, "Will an hour be sufficient, Mr. Nash?" Ew. Yes. I know. Ew. I said there was no smut, but there was this. That, that was this. I feel like some, that's some worse than some yes. <laughs> Hello, this is editor Alison Daisy, and I've just realised that I didn't talk about the most bad problematic thing in Never Never, which is basically um, Silas goes up to help this um, drunk homeless woman, and then um, Charlie's inner monologue is like, I wonder if he knew that she was homeless when he went to help her. I wouldn't touch her. She smells. Like, she has done absolutely nothing wrong in this book except exist. And Charlie's just like hating on her just because she's homeless. Like, why do you need to have that in the book? Make it make sense. Why do you need to have that in the book? My first thought is ugly, but it's more of a fact than a judgment. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> <Down around. laughs> <laughs> they just walk down the street in the middle of town. <laughs> There's meant to be like the, the oh my god, I'm so much taller. There's meant to be like the bad street in town, and then she's going to Silas. I just saw my first penis, and I'm like, that is an actual bit of dialogue that you just wrote in your fucking book. I was gonna watch this. <laughs> you don't talk about Verity, mate. I feel his edginess. <laughs> yeah, I underlined it. It's like, yeah, he's so emo. The way that this guy is written, he's such a fucking gaslighter. Like, I, 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 <laughs> like, I don't know how to say it. Like, so they went to this diner, basically, with her sister, and she found out some stuff that, like, would help maybe bring back their memories. And then Silas is like, why didn't you tell me that? Like, he's not hiding that he found out the fact that they're, like, a massive big secret, that their two fathers, like, hate each other because of this, like, business thing that went down. Like, um, he, like, stole money from each other or something, right. basically. And he found out this, like, 12 whole hours ago, and he hasn't told her shit about it. Now he's being mad that she went to some diner with her sister. Like, I, I just don't he get it. He sounds really, really, really annoying. But, oh yeah, like they keep just like dropping the sort of hints in like, oh yeah, she's so tiny. He's so big, like that kind of thing. But I was expecting that, so that didn't surprise me too much. 
I've got one of those. And then, like, as you see, like, my tabs, the first, like, half of the book, I've got, like, quite a lot, but then towards These the end... These are bad things, basically. Yeah, Funny. Towards the end, there's just, like, nothing. Because the second half of this book was just so fucking boring. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just really bad, because I, I kept reading, because I was like, something's gonna... You read gonna... really fast. Yeah, I was like, something's gonna happen, right? Because I was like, surely something's gonna happen. But nothing fucking happened. My favourite, my favourite <gasps> line, right. So, for context, this is in a letter. So the letter starts with, Dear Charlie Baby. And then he talks about, you'll get really angry when you're hungry. And then he goes, can we just keep granola bars in your purse or something? It's just that I worry about my balls. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what does he mean? What does he mean? I just, it's just that I worry about my balls. What is he talking about? I thought that was the dad still. <laughs> yeah. No, because I was messaging Daisy whilst I was reading this. Like, you will not believe what I just read. She was like, wait, is that still a letter from her dad? And I was like, fuck no. Oh, she was wearing a leopard print tutu by page 20. I saw Halloween costume as a demon. A demon? She was dressed, she was going as a dark angel or a demon for Halloween. And, and she, she was wearing a, a leopard, leopard print, print tutu. tutu. There's this one bit where he's recording himself sneaking into Charlie's bedroom. And like, it's basically like a sex tape of their 14 year old selves and they're watching it over- They're 14 year old? Or maybe they're 15, but yeah. Oh. And they're like watching it on the Bluetooth speakers of this car. That's crazy. Just like, but together. That's when you texted me. Yeah. And then someone opens the car door whilst they're watching it and he yeah, is you told it. me that. And I was like, I actually couldn't deal with that it. That was like, this time last week actually. I had to shut the book and just like put it down and be like, this isn't real. <laughs> This isn't real, this isn't, it can't hurt you, it can't hurt you. Did I mention the bit where her dad simps over Edward Cullen? <laughs> <laughs> That's call, so wild. He calls him dreamy in a letter. Like, yeah, they end one of their, oh yeah, I swear I'll have every single letter you've ever written me until the day I die. Hashtag snail mail forever. <laughs> I wanted to die. That. I think yours is cringier than mine. Yeah. Because mine's not, no, mine's like weird, but it's not cringy. Mine was so, cr cringy. it was so cringy. Two stars, I think, I don't know why I got the second star now, like looking back, I'm just like, I think this was just a really bad book. It wasn't even like funny bad, it was just boring and cringe. It, the ending was like slightly cute, but not really because like, I just didn't care about either of them. Like it, it was a waste of paper, apart from the, it's just that I worry about my balls line, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, so, Verity. Okay, I gave it 3 out of 5 on Goodreads, which I thought it would be less, but it was actually alright. The mystery plot and the like thrilling element was actually quite interesting, and I like the idea of like the ambiguous ending, where you can decide which version of the story you believe. But basically, it centres around Verity is like a best-selling author, and her husband Jeremy um, hires, basically Verity's, Verity is kind of like in a coma because she got in a car crash. Um, so Verity hires Lowen, who is like a- this is- this is what doesn't make sense. Lowen is an author, no one has heard of, no one has read her books. She's like- Yeah, but like Jeremy stalked her, didn't he? No. Well, no, cause like- He was just like, I've read one of your books, I really liked it. And then he hired her to finish a best-selling author series. Then he's right. books or something. Like, it doesn't make sense. Well, it's cause he was in love with her the whole time. Maybe, you never know. But doesn't she- doesn't the book start where it's like someone gets run over and it's just never mentioned yeah, again? Yeah, so There's basically, just, like, no at the start- at She's walking along the street, and then how Jeremy and her meet is this guy gets run over on the car, blood splatters all over her, so she's completely covered. And then Jeremy's like, oh my god, are you okay? And then gives her his shirt. And then gives her his shirt. Isn't like the whole time she's reading her autobiography, it's just like, it's smart. Well, yeah, mostly. Anyway. Didn't they do it in a steak and shake? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So basically, she moves into the house so she can finish the series, but as she is going through Verity's stuff, she finds this manuscript that Verity has written. And it's basically Verity like confessing to doing being a horrible person, a psychotic person, who basically tried to abort her babies when she was pregnant because she would like Jeremy. Jeremy like said that he loved. It's the way you said. Oh my god, she was psychotic. She tried to get an abortion. No. Basically, the reason she did it though, this is why it's psychotic, is because Jeremy was like, oh yeah, I love our children so much already, and then she was basically just really jealous and was like, why is Jeremy loving them more than me? Yeah. And then she tried to give herself an abortion because she was like, he can't love the children more than me. So that's why it's crazy. Okay, this is crazy. She has a premonition that, um, <laughs> that Harper's gonna kill Chastin. The twins are called Harper and Chastin. <laughs> she has a premonition that Harper's gonna kill Chastin. Has Chastin got an X in it somewhere? No, it's just Chastin. <laughs> but she's like, oh my god, Harper's gonna kill Chastin. I hate Harper and I love Chastin now. So basically, Is Chastin it? dies one day at a friend's house with a peanut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. And then, but then the whole 
whole time she's like thinking that Harper killed her because of this <laughs> like vision that she had or something. So then one day she goes out in the canoe with their other son that they've just had and she basically lets Harper drown. She makes Harper <laughs> drown. Right. And then um so basically that's that. And and this whole time this there's like bits of Lowen reading it reading this writing. one chapter a day yeah this is crazy she reads about all chapter a day of this juicy manuscript she starts suspecting verity is a murderer obviously because what <laughs> she she's saying one and verity lives in the house of them and she's like oh yeah i've just read a chapter never mind it's too hard i'll read the next one tomorrow <laughs> or in a few days i'm sorry but if you're living in a house with a suspecting murderer and what there's the juicy fuck? gossip i've got hair I've got, i can't get rid of it there we go and there's juicy gossip going on why the hell would you be reading one chapter a day? You'd be binging that in a few hours. I feel like this is just kind of a general statement from the one book I've read and like everything else I've seen. But it's like Colleen Hoover's characters aren't like fully developed. They don't feel no, like real people. Not. They just kind of she feel doesn't. like they're like caricatures of like what you'd imagine. Like my one was just like oh yeah, like a slightly edgy like seventeen year old who's like not quite like other girls, and she's like so purposeful and like perfect. But like she there doesn't there's no actual evidence of them being those traits. Yes. It's just kind of on page. They're just like yeah. Yeah, she is. She is mm. that girl. Yeah, but it it's doesn't like, show it. Doesn't it. Actually, it doesn't develop like, it. Their characters don't reflect what we're told their characters are, oh, if yes, that makes that's sense. Very it's correct. just, I don't know, it just pisses me off. I'm like, it just feels like lazy writing to me. It just feels yeah, like lazy character the development, lazy writing. Well, it's just like, absolutely. oh, I need to get this book out in two months so I can top all ten top spots on the New York bestsellers list. Like, fuck off. Yep. Write a book that's actually good and thought out. Yeah. Anyway, then they murder Verity. <laughs> Lowen and Jeremy, because, oh, by this point, Lowen and Jeremy are in love, even though Jeremy is still married to Verity. Lowen's like, oh my god, he's the best thing ever, I love him so much. And then they, um, then Lowen proceeds to try and get pregnant with Jeremy's child, even though Verity is still in the picture. Because that's all women ever want, they, ju they just want a child. Not for the best bit. Wait, did yours have religious propaganda as well? No. Hi, Daisy's parents. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Well, Daisy has highlighted this line in her book that she has bought, spent her money on that says, He wasn't rich, yet I still wanted to fuck Thank you. So basically, <laughs> throughout this book, in Verity's manuscripts, it's just basically Verity and Jeremy having sex. No, like, but it's just time, like... Basically. Doesn't she just drop the most, like, problematic shit and then just, like, never develop it or have a reason for it? Oh, like, no. Isn't one of the kids, like, um, neurodivergent and oh, they yeah, get treated uh, like, like, second class and it's like... No, no, but that's because Verity makes it up. Oh, right. Verity, basically, Verity doesn't like Harper at all, so she doesn't talk to her and stuff. And then Jeremy's like, oh, well, she's, like, she doesn't talk, she seems sad. And then she's like, oh, yeah, she has Asperger's or something. Oh, right. <laughs> it's just, like, it's just, that's like, the, the random OCD comment that's dropped in that's, like, I know, I think that was published maybe, like, ten years ago, but I hope people now know that it's, like, Not just because like you're organising your pens in Rainbow Order doesn't mean you have OCD. Like, it's a serious condition. You can't just, like, drop that in for, like shock value it's like a line no, in your yeah. book it was not even shock value it's just like a casual thing you're adding in your book and like why does that need to be there like you're offending a whole group of people for what like oh yeah telling us how organized her drawers are like i don't i don't, I don't, I don't get, get it. it i don't get it and then basically once she finished this once she finishes the manuscript they kill verity and then she um as they're about to leave the house lowen and jeremy Ver lowen finds a letter that verity had hidden for jeremy basically saying she didn't do it at all and she had made it all up. Because basically, she, her novel that Verity is writing is set in the mind of the villain, and her writing coach had told her to write her own line from the villain's perspective. <laughs> so basically write the opposite of what she was thinking the whole time. And she actually loved everyone, and she was just trying to be a villain so that she could get in the headspace So there's a possibility that they just so murdered an innocent Oh yeah, and then Jeremy read the manuscript earlier, like before Lowen even arrived, he had already read it. And he had tried to murder Verity twice <laughs> before this. He had tried to murder Verity because he thought that she had murdered the children. And then he wouldn't let her explain it. And then, they just oh, and then he put her in the car crash that got her in the coma. That is insane. I didn't know that. Also, how the hell is she faking all these brain scans? Because she's not actually in a coma because she's writing this letter. And she's moving around. How does she fake all the brain scans I... and like act so still that she didn't even flinch or whatever? Ever? Like, I think for both of these books, you have to dis suspend your disbelief like incredibly hard. But I was suspending mine yeah, so, so far, it was like floating off the floor. And I still couldn't ignore the fucking plot holes. Like, I just want Colleen Hoover to write a single normal fucking love interest. Like, all of them are at least a bit insane. Like, that is like genuinely insane. But this guy is just like. I don't know, he just makes some comments sometimes and I'm just like, like the mild like sexism or there's like casual jokes about like assault and stuff and I'm just like, well why, 
Why put it in? I, 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 I need to be in there. I don't get like these are marketed towards young children. This one especially is like YA. This can't be marketed to young children. No, but like, like in, this in is tr- actually traumatizing. Like, read the trigger warnings for this, especially if you're a parent. Yeah. Because some of the stuff she does to her children. Like I, I've seen comments where it's like a thirteen-year-old walked into oh, like definitely. Barnes and Noble and bought Credence. It's just like stuff like that. If you don't know what Credence is, don't search it up. But yeah. Anyway, my best points. Oh yeah. So this is in her manuscript. I'm here to discuss the first thing my baby ever stole from me. Jeremy. The whole point of this book is like the ending. You can be team manuscript, like she's evil, or you can be team letter, she's actually good. But it's the way and that... Jeremy's kind of evil. But it's the way that Colin Hoover tried to write like a, oh yeah, maybe she was a girl boss all along ending. And then in the interview she was like, Yeah. I like to think that Verity was evil. Like why even leave it open for interpretation? To be fair, the evil version is far more like interesting. Yeah. But like I actually that's the thing I liked about this book. I actually really like the fact that it was an ambiguous ending. Because it's like you can completely decide which version you want to be, and I think that's really cool actually. Yeah. And the actual thriller, like mystery plot of this was quite good. It was just like all the characters were problematic. There was so much smut. Yeah. And it was just like. But isn't the actual thriller mystery plot like thirty percent of the book? Probably. If that. Probably. If you believe the other ending where she was actually like innocent, mm. then doesn't that make for a really interesting storyline with Jeremy? Because he's. Yeah, because then he's. Because he's obviously evil. a psycho that tried yes. to kill her multiple times anyway. Because he didn't let her explain what was going on. Yeah. He just read the manuscript and was like, dead. And like, I'm pretty sure in the epilogue thing, um, he tries to murder this other random woman as well. So he's obviously just like not fucking right in the head. No, but Lowen's obsessed with it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so basically, in the manuscript, she's just had given birth. And from when she had tried to give herself an abortion with a coat hanger, one of the children has a scar on its face. Does that even work like that? I don't understand how that works. Because like, surely at that stage, if you can give yourself an abortion, they're like cells. They're like microscopic yeah i don't get yeah that's another thing i don't i'm not a <laughs> medical person at all but i still don't get how that works anyway so she's lying in the bed and she says to jeremy bring me the scarred one I'm like okay you're not summoning a demon <laughs> it's mate. like lion king it's your child <laughs> okay so lowen and jeremy kiss for the first time so then she's like it's everything i imagine kissing him would feel like it's radiation really explosives sorry. dynamite it's totally really disillusioning <laughs> sorry <laughs> and then i said let's hope she gets radiation poisoning Yes, because he's married. Even though he's a psycho, he's still married. And she is upstairs, incapacitated. And well, well, they're both at fault here. It's actually, her. no, this is wild, because I actually got scared at this. While they're kissing, she looks up and she sees Verity standing at the top of the stairs with her fist clenched, like, staring at them. That actually spooked me. I was in bed and it was dark and I was reading it. I was like, ah! Because she was standing at the stairs <laughs> watching them. And then she looked back to kissing him again. And then Jeremy looked up and he was like, she's not. Ooh. And there was also another scene where Crew, their son, like Verity and Jeremy's Crew. son, was in Verity's room and he was, um, Lowen went up and he cut himself with a knife. And then she's, and then he said, Mummy told me not to play with her knives. And then Jeremy and Lowen go to sort him out and Jeremy's like, can you get, get the knife out of the room? I feel and like she goes back and the knife that Verity had isn't there. This could be a good story if you did it well. Same with that. If, if someone else it wrote well, it. Maybe in the future, if she posts like what, posts, shit, I'm chronically online. Maybe in the future, yeah, if, maybe in the future, if she releases a book that just sounds like so batshit crazy, that it'd just be like fun, Enta- entertaining, to be fair, this is entertaining or funny I'll bad. I'll give it that, but not like, for the right reasons. This this was genuinely just really boring. Like, <laughs> no, it was just boring and it was cringe. This was entertaining, but it was so stupid and so messed up and so psychopathic and so horny. Yeah, no, this one was really horny as well. Not as bad as this. All her, well, not all her book plots. They have potential, but like this has the way that they're written is just like bad, insanely terrible. Because I feel like there's so many people that could write this book better than her, and yet she's the one that writes it and gets to the top of the charts. Basically, so I just, I'll never understand it. Moral of the story: Colin Hoover's shit at writing, and someone else needs to write her books. Yeah. Don't read it. Do read it if you're horny. Do you like granola bars? Do you ever worry about your balls? Thank you for watching and don't. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank Subscribe for watching. to our channel because we want money. Uh, You're not meant to say that bit. Oh, Let I'm us know if you've read either of the books today because I want to know if ever, anyone else has seen Because I never see this get talked about anywhere. And I want to know if everyone else found it as atrociously boring as I do or I'm just the only one. And I want to know if you found this good because I have seen lots of good reviews for this. I've seen so many mixed reviews though. Yes, it's mixed, but like the fact there's so many good ones is kind of concerning. So I want to know what you <laughs> thought. If yeah. you liked it, let me know and we will reply to your comments. Let us know if you want us to read more Colin Hoover books in the Please future. Say no. uh, yeah, actually, I don't know why I said don't that. Say I, that. Don't, don't say Don't say yes.
and we'll see you next week hopefully that is that's probably a lie thank you bye <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how wasn't trying to cross my mosquitoes and four-legged ants? Bring me the scarred one. Okay. Cause like this was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, knock. Looking, Looking back, me. Looking back, me. We're editing and Daisy's just fucking all over my computer screen and my keyboard. What the fuck? Okie dokes. Okie dokes. Don't be mean. I'm not just repeating what you said. If you heard it in a mean way, that's your fault. Um, <coughs> next. Thank you. No. I was gonna say she looks like Miss Piggy. Wait, yeah. <laughs> it's not cringe. This is cringe. This is really cringe. We didn't. We Being did as efficient as possible. Leave a like. Subscribe.